Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Global Cooling Rundown from June 3rd to June 9th, 2017. President Trump, quote, I'm not a big believer in global warming. Rip it out by the roots, this Paris Climate Treaty. Collects it. Passed. And when we look back in history over the last 800 years, do you ever ask yourself, why did the temperatures drop and then rise again without all the influence of CO2? We're on track to begin the grand solar minimum and another mini ice age right now. And how the media overlooked all the cooling events happening globally is beyond me. Eastern half of the U.S., below normal. It's only going to get up into the 50s in Boston. Yeah, it's in June already. It's summer. Adelaide, coldest start to winter since 1943. Finland, coldest May in 50 years. Still snowing in Moscow. Still snowing in St. Petersburg. 18 degree below normal temperatures coming across Europe this week. And you notice the same areas that I just showed you match up with the Maunder minimum cooling. Those drops in temperature and then again the rise in temperature of up to 2C well before CO2 and factories and automobiles were around. Natural variability. Let's make science great again. The blueprint for amplification is right in front of you. NASA putting out a piece. Is current warming natural? They admit that the Earth has warmed before the Industrial Revolution, but they never have any graphics to show you how the temperature over the last 2,000 years has risen and fallen and risen and fallen and risen and fallen. They also talk about the effects of volcanism. It doesn't happen that fast and it doesn't have that much of an effect yet. We look at Pinatubo, we see the cooling. Somalis and Tambora, instant cooling. But according to NASA, these natural causes, they occur too slowly. But then when we look back in time, 1453, Two and a half degree rise in about 25 years. That's just really too slow. And then they also talk about during solar maxima, this is what really increases the temperature on our planet. Yet they forget to tell you the largest grand solar maximum of the last 3,000 years has just occurred. And directly after that time, the temperatures on our Earth started to fall again. We need to adjust the chart to make it look like this. What does a trend in cosmic ray increases look like on our planet going forward? Starting back in January, so much snow on Loveland Pass that it buried an avalanche warning sign. One of my favorite stories from the year. Progressing into February, record low temperatures and snow hitting Taiwan. Please remember, this is on 25 degrees north latitude. They set cold records and snow records across the northern part of the island. Moving into March, so much rainfall along with that record snow across the Sierra Nevada mountains. Lake Tahoe above its natural rim. Wide out for you here, incredibly beautiful photo. Then into April, flash floods hitting Singapore. Wait a second, that's the dry season. Remember those flash floods in Thailand also, dry season. Heaviest May snowfall on record in New Hampshire. Mount Washington, 33 inches of snow. Digging a little deeper, 12 inches is the average in May. They got 33 inches in a single storm. That's three times. And I love how further in the article, we're talking about record cold and snowstorms. And then they're saying such heat in May is somewhat unusual, but not out of the ordinary. Wait a minute, I thought the entire article was about record snow. Jumping up to May 30th, just a week ago, more snow for Idaho. New creeks forming, reservoir beaches underwater just like we saw in Tahoe. Alturas Lake, Sawtooth National Forest. Interesting how it's still snowing when we were talking about global warming this whole time. So you just have to wonder when the snowfalls will end and when it'll start melting. Because when it does start melting, then they can talk about global warming. When the snow starts to finally melt in August somewhere, they can prove that there's global warming because the snow's melting in August. Killington, Vermont, announces free skiing, snowboarding June 1st. And the resort still stayed open a few days after that as well. I do believe it's even open today, June 6th. First time in 15 years, 
Now, wait, we were supposed to have less and less and less snow during these winters. We're going to be shorter and shorter and shorter due to global warming. I'm going to say it's because of galactic cosmic rays increasing. Spensmark, the cloud mystery. Also, you can jump over to CERN in Switzerland, C-E-R-N, cloud project number six. They all come to the same conclusion. Increased galactic cosmic rays mean increased cloud cover heavier rainstorms, more snow. Oh yeah, that's what the global warming people claim evaporation from the oceans will do the same. So they've tried to cover their bases so that all these weather changes that occur, global warming has an explanation for it. They'll never talk about the sun. They'll never debate about the effects of the sun, the electric universe, galactic cosmic rays. You're gonna have to do your own research on this. New guest essay by David Archibald taking us up to the current state of our sun, entering its grand solar minimum. Not only is solar cycle 24 well below any of the last solar cycles over the last 120 years, the amount of cosmic rays far above anything in the last 100 years as well. And as we enter into solar cycle 25, it's going to grow from this point forward, another 19% increase over solar cycle 24. They're looking at trends. Why don't we look at trends as well? Not the sun, but the weather, the effects from the sun. Adelaide shivers through the coldest start to winter ever recorded. Coldest June 1st on record since 1943 and further back unofficially into the late 1890s. Now, as always, in a city, it's going to be warmer than in the surrounding countryside where it was pushing minus 2.9, minus 4.5 C. Now, since we're looking at the trend, all we're going to do is look into Australia. Let's go back 2016 in July. Cold wave. Adelaide coldest start in nearly 30 years. Adelaide coldest August in 126 years, 2014, 15 and 16 and now 2017. Every single year in Adelaide is showing cold. Australia itself, New South Wales, wintry blast two months early. 20 centimeters of snow when it should have been sunny and warm, taking everybody by surprise. Jumping over to New Zealand, we should be looking for a trend there as well. 2017, fierce polar blast in the middle of summer. Worst winter storms in decades. They're even calling it the lost summer in New Zealand. It's snowing in the middle of summer in New Zealand. Heaviest summer snowfalls in living memory. Yet nobody sees the trend. It's invisible. We're staying in the Southern Hemisphere. Let's talk about Brazil. Record cold, threatening corn production. Winter starting two months early in Brazil as well this year. Coldest temperatures in Brazilian cities in 46 years. Let's jump back to last year. Coldest September in 50 years. So much record cold, in fact, affecting coffee production in 2016. Argentina not immune either. Border pass is already closing due to snow and cold and hail. The measured galactic cosmic rays are up 13% over the last two years, but it's forecast to increase another 19% in solar cycle 25. So as we see these galactic cosmic rays increasing, which we have through solar cycle 24, they create more cloud cover. That's why you're seeing heavier rainstorms, heavier snowstorms. I encourage you to look at the cloud mystery, Spensmark, the work that's being conducted by their team, as well as the team at CERN, C-E-R-N, cloud project number six. Now, if there's been this much atmospheric compression event, lateral winds, massive 500 year floods week after week after week, just because of that small incremental increase that you've seen from solar cycle 23 to 24, we're gonna add another 19% on that, which means everywhere you look across the planet is gonna start to have severe crop losses due to frost, winds, and out of season snows, just like South Africa, another trend. 2016, let's look at it. Below normal temperatures, re near record cold. Let's go back to 2014, 2013, and 2012. Anything in South Africa? Oh yeah, record low, record low, record low broken. You can see the trend if you open your eyes and start looking. The reason I bring this to your attention is the Southern Hemisphere is going into its winter. So what do you expect to happen this winter? 
you're seeing the trends in front of you, why don't you try your best to predict where it's going to get cold and where we'll have record snows and crop losses. Look on the map, put a point, color code it, and see how your predictions pan out over the next year. Those of you supporting me on Patreon, I sent you another message trying to explain what I meant by the amplification of weather patterns over these next six months strengthening into 2018 and 19 since several of you asked me. Please make sure to check your inbox for that. And here we go again, June snows. And after this out of season cold front rolls through, there'll be another one behind it which will bring us right up into almost July snows across the west coast. The only thing that can explain this is absolutely a shift in the intertropical convergence zone, which happens every single grand solar minimum. Out of season rains and snow from Oregon down to, you guessed it, Orville Dam in California. Mount Bachelor up to 12 inches of snow everywhere else. Inches, that's plural, of rain. This will take us through the weekend. And this shift that you're witnessing here is the beginning of the amplification right on schedule. Late July, you're going to see a ramp up in this type of jet stream patterns, atmospheric compression events, out of season snows, storms. It's going to ramp up from this point forward. Potential snowfall through Tuesday. Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Oregon, Washington. Look at the continental U.S. West, that light blue snowfall. And it'll also include icy conditions. Taking a look at the Weather Channel, storm coverage, all I'm seeing is June snow, June snow. Snow showers in early June and then, what, 40 inches of snow. And Storm Valerie, just a couple weeks ago. Now we're going to be looking for trends, so July snowfall. Idaho, 2016, Montana, July snows, 2015, and take a look at how much snow is still left up at Mammoth. This is June 8th. They're still skiing over in Killington, Vermont. This would add right in with Mount Washington all-time record May snows. Now, all these signs are around us. It just happened stance that July snows started in 2015, following in 2016. Now we have June snows and we'll have July snows in 2017. And just these last three years, it's just quirky because of global warming or something that we have July snows. You can't see the pattern forming as we're entering this grand solar minimum.